Tell me, man, who sent you? I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't have time for your silly games. Give me the short film's name. Okay, it's 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 Tony Seven, but that's all I know, man. Who directed it? I don't know. A UT student? I'm sorry, I don't know. Give me a name. It's Andy Young, but that's all I know. Seven. Yeah, the bank robber, right in your hands. What happened? Chief, I know I dropped the ball on that one, but sometimes you just gotta look for danger in unnecessary places. But if you weren't my identical twin brother, I don't know what I'd do. Nevertheless, I'm pairing you up with a new partner. Ooh. I don't want to hear it, Tony. Danger, get in here. This is Danger McGonagall. He's been on the beat in Argentina for ten years, and now he's here to help you in the States. Get acquainted. Nah, nice to meet you. Alright, that's enough. Now, there was a drug deal reported last night in the city. I want both of you to check it out. Two drug kingpins working together. This case seems familiar. It should. We've been working on it for months. This is your 20th partner this week. Right. It's one big straight in the battle. I work alone. Stay the hell out of the way. Alright, well listen, Seven. The reason the police commissioner made me your partner is because I'm the best we've got. Alright? So you're just gonna have to deal with it. Go get the car. I'll meet you. Why are you stopping here? Something I have to do. Who is it? Katie? Katie Withers? It's me, Tony. I came to see you and our, our son. Oh, Tony, he's not here right now. I want to see our son, damn it! I miss you. I miss being with the best soccer coach I know. Honey, who's at the door? Oh no, Kevin, don't worry. Hello, Tony. Hello, Kevin. Soccer coach. Tony, why don't you just get out? You can take my life, but I'll be back. Oh, by the way, honey. Found your purse this morning. It's really technically a tote bag, but I guess- It's not a tote bag! It's a purse. All right, uh, you have a nice day, Tony. Hey. Don't tell me what to do. You drive, Rook. So what was all that about? I don't want to talk about it. All right, I understand. There's my ex-wife, Katie Withers. She used to be Katie Seven, because she's my wife, obviously. Right. Now she took Kevin Withers' last name, so now she's Katie Withers. Both great soccer coaches. Okay, maybe we should just focus on finding these drug dealers. Hey. Don't tell me what to do. But you're right, let's, let's go do that. What is it? It just looks like ketchup. No, it's but... blood. Oh, okay. <sighs> He'd be positive. There's only one man in the city with that kind of blood. Where are the drugs? What's going on? What are you doing here? I can smell them. Where are they? You guys just sit down. Let's just talk about this. <sighs> Tony, what the hell's the matter with you? You can't just bust into a place like that. What the? Relax, McGonagall. I have a good inkling that there's some drugs here. No, there's, there's no drugs here. I'm sorry. I wish I could be a little, little more helpful. Where's Katie? Seven. We've been over this before. She, she doesn't want to see you. No. No, no, it's all right. Um, I, I think she's in the other room. Let me go get her. Hello, Seven. Hello, Katie. My God. You look as beautiful as the day we conceived our child. Tony, we're not married anymore. You can't keep coming over here. I miss you. I miss your flat chest and your beard rubbing against my beard. Tony, please, just get out of here. Honey, what's going on? Oh, don't worry about it. No, Tony. no, Katie, don't leave me. Just go. No, Katie. No, Katie. She's gone. We gotta go. Someone left a backpack. <laughs> Cuban baking powder. We hit the jackpot. Who leaves this stuff around? I know, it's pretty convenient, huh? What's it say? A mechanic dealership. I know just where to go. Where are the drugs? Tony, what are we doing in this house again? This is where the drugs are. Come on! I'm gonna have to ask both of you to leave, and if you come back, I'm gonna call the police. The real police. Are we clear? <laughs> I want to see my wife one more time. No, 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 we gotta go. Thank you so much for your hospitality, you Mr. Withers. Let's get you out of here. You can't tell me what to do! Come on! Come on! Where's your problem? 
You need to get your head in this case. You're just at the crack. What are you talking about? Who's gonna tell us where the drugs were? You screwed it up. Really, really? Because it seems like I'm the only one who's actually doing anything about this, trying to find these drug dealers. What are you saying? I'm saying maybe we should go our separate ways. Oh, is that the way you want it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Sounds good to me. Fine. Hey. I'm sorry. I forgive you. I've got the case. I'll be over in five. Turn up here. What the hell took you so long? Which went out? Okay, so it looks like Arturo Ramirez and Bobby Moroni have been giving drugs to these mechanics who then in turn use their cars that they work on to transport the cocaine across the city. But it seems like Arturo Ramirez cut Bobby Moroni out. That's the blood we found earlier today. He's dead somewhere. And I've got all of the evidence right here. You did a great job. Thank you. I know exactly what to do with it. Return from which you came! What the hell? That was everything we needed for this case. You need to trust me on this one. Okay, just... Tell me we're not going to your ex-wife's place. What are you doing, Kevin? What? Can you get away with it? What are we doing here? I'll tell you everything you want to know, just please. Yes. Let me explain. Gotta, what? What? Wait, Mr. Withers, you know about the drugs? Don't you get it? I'm not Kevin Withers. I'm not even Katie Withers. You see, I'm... What the hell was that about? You lied to me. I can't stand liars, Danger. You... You do realize this is murder, right? You, you, you don't understand, all right? He had his finger on the button. What button? There's a bomb in this apartment. We gotta find it somewhere. What are you talking about? Damn, it's locked. Uh, it's, it's, uh, what time is it? It's 10.30, okay? I think we should just really... No, man. The year. What? Is it 2053? Uh, 2053? What I'm a time driver for the year 3000. Look! Either you tell me what's going on right now, or I am leaving. Just you, sir, are completely insane! So what's it gonna be? Hmm. Don't tell me what to do. How far to the film festival? It says it's gonna take three days. There's no time to power walk, Kimasabi. Let's go. You're never gonna make it. Listen to me here, kid. We got 48 hours to get to the film festival. We're not gonna make it, we're not. Keep your pants on, muchacho. We're gonna get ourselves some short film action. Oh, I'm done. Jesus Christ, Kimo. We gotta get to the festival. I lived a good life, man. Tell my wife. You didn't hear? She's dead. What? Time to pay the price. What are you dealing? I don't know what you're talking about, man. Well, what's this then, huh? It's just an interview, man. With who? Cat Candler. Open it. All right, well, thank you for joining us here for another CCF interview. We're here with uh, Kat Candler. My name's David Weiser. I'm Steven Zarita. And let's start the questions. All right. I'm grilling. OK, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, so uh, our big question right now is, what are you working on right now? <laughs> um, yeah, that's the question you get at parties all the time. So what are you working on? Um, I am, we're in post-production on Hellion, the short right. film we just shot. Um, I'm about to start a rewrite for a film that I wrote that goes into production September 5th in Canada um, that I'm not directing. Uh, it's a teen thriller called Love Me, and um, I'm working on a, a feature screenplay about a death metal band. It's a horror film, and I mean, let's could go on and on because you know there's like always a bazillion things going on. But those are sort of the main things main I'm thing. working on. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, also, what is like your inspiration for Hellion? Sounds pretty. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So my mom has three younger brothers who were hell raising kids when they were little. And so she told me this story about how they had set my grandfather's Jeep on fire, and then the aftermath of that, it was each one had to get called into the bedroom for a, the belt. And um, the, each one would go in and come out with just like bawling their little eyes out and like 
just horrified. And then the last, the youngest of them, my uncle Frank, uh, he went in and he was just like completely terrified to go in. And then when the belt went up, it came down on the side of the bed, totally missing his little butt completely. And it was, his dad was just like start screaming. And so he just started faking it. And when he came out, he was like, you better, you know, better cry and make it look real. So it was all about, you know, I don't know. Kind of forgiveness <laughs> for something so Yeah, big. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, what we think our dads are and what they really are. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, a fun a little, it's a fun little film about three hell raising kids who the aftermath of duct taping their babysitter to the side of the house and starting a fire in their front yard. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know. Sounds like perfect little angels. Oh yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> sweet. So, you know, we're always learning from our past experiences. So what did you apply from your past to this, pre this current film? Uh, a ton <laughs> of stuff. Um, well, you know, one of the first things I talk about in class with all my students is work with nice people, work with good people. And, you know, people are like, kind of giggle at it. And I'm like, no, seriously, like work with nice people. And you, um, it's about creating a good vibe on set. And I think if you create a good vibe on set, then um, you allow people to do their best work. And so that's, that's the huge thing that I've always been a, a kind of stickler on is I, I do my little research when somebody says, so-and-so wants to work on set. So I'll make my little phone calls and like, are they nice? Are they good people? Like, are we gonna have fun hanging out with them? Um, so that's that's my big thing. I've, I've made every mistake in the book, <laughs> every mistake. And I've made them multiple times sometimes. Um, but ultimately I think it's, it's about loving your story like through and through and loving your characters and having fun with it. Like really having fun. And you know, kind of going back to the acting thing, like my biggest lesson is finding kick-ass actors. If you have the most badass actors who you don't have to like rip performances from, who like really bring it, it just makes your world so like heavenly. It's like, oh, I don't have to like, <laughs> try a million different takes like they get it you've rehearsed you you're from the same place um, and I think that was such a joy on the set was just having fantastic actors and being able to play it's like being a little kid again and like <laughs> having your little matchbox cars and your little Barbie dolls and creating a world and yeah <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Kat Candler, for joining us today for our interview, and we'll hope to see you again. The interview was the bomb? I agree, man, it was dynamite. No, literally, this is a bomb. Look. We're gonna have to defuse this bomb! You always cut the green wire. There are no green wires! Come on, man. I took the shortcut. It's right over there. Just a couple more steps. Let's go. I've seen short films you wouldn't believe. A film by third time's a charm. Witch slap. witch named Rose Gillen. She used to be good, but now she's a villain. The witch ruled her kingdom with spells and black magic. All trembled before her. It was rather tragic. She would feast on the flesh of innocent people. This witch was so cruel, downright evil. Hear ye, hear ye! Hear ye, hear ye! Emotional core has been shaken! Hear ye, hee-ho! Where did our princess go? Word spread through the village of her disappearance. Here comes our hero, 
oh so fearless. He was a prince, also very charming. The prince found this news rather alarming. He vowed to kill the witch and save the princess's life, give her a ring and make her his wife. So off he went on an epic quest to declare his love and rescue the princess. Sword in hand and courage in heart, he would save the day till death do him part. I will set free the princess from that witch's possession. A sword in true love, the ultimate weapon. I will give her my love as a sign of my devotion. My love is no match for that witch's potion. Now let's get this fairy tale into motion. Every step so brave and so strong, he journeyed all day and all night long. Dashing and daring, a hero for sure, the princess knew he would be coming for her. Slaying dragons left and right, never giving up, never losing the fight. Into the lair the witch dragged her highness, down into the dungeon, consumed with blindness. Deep in the depths of pure evil, the princess could tell that this witch ate people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Would you like to know what's on today's menu? Just a second, I have an oven to attend to. Let me out of here, you... you horrible beast! Oh, I will. But first we must feast. I'll nibble on your brains and chomp on your bones. Help! Help! I want to go home! <laughs> A knight in shining armor he truly was. Suddenly, the prince heard a magical buzz. Out popped a fairy, enchanted and true. If you believe in her, she will believe in you. But beware of her, for she is known to deceive. So be careful in what you believe. Can you help me find my pixie dust? You look like a strong, honest man I can trust. I have scattered the forest far and wide, but I have come up empty every time. I hope that you do not fear me. If you help, I will award you dearly. Little fairy, little fairy, I am sorry for your mess, but I cannot help you until I finish my quest. Now, I regret to inform you it is time for me to go. I'm off to save a princess, you know. Oh, you have made a big mistake, for your journey will no longer be a piece of cake. A puff and then a poof, there went the fairy, poor little prince, another burden to carry. Abracadabra and hocus pocus, I must cast a few spells, but first I must focus. Let me go! I will after supper, don't you know? I wanna, wanna go home and, and brush my royal hair! Did I mention that I really don't care? Keep quiet, or I'll use your skin to construct a chair. Make a mighty throne for myself, you see? Then all the kingdom will bow to me. So sit down, relax. You'll have a long stay here. Did I mention that I happen to be a skilled furniture maker? Oh, my. Oh my, where am I? What happened to the ring? What crazy, horrible creature would do such a thing? <laughs> Finders keepers, losers weepers. <laughs> and so the prince, in this time of desperation, formed a plan to resolve this complication. I ask with kindness and pure dignity that you hand over that ring in all sincerity. Who do you think you are, oh so handsome prince? In a few moments, you'll be gone in a whimps. The only solution to get your thing back is to form a glorious battle. You are under attack!
Yes, times were rough for this handsome young prince until he heard a sound that caught his glimpse. My darling, my love, I know she is near. I am coming, princess, you have nothing to fear. I hope this story has blessed you with laughter, but will the prince and his beloved live happily ever after? Royal fingers with a ring upon it? There is much doubt. I wouldn't count on it. And we're here. Uh, where's the film festival at? That was like two months ago. What the f Oh hey there. Didn't see you. Thanks for watching CCF. If you want to rewatch any of the short films from today's episode, or see more of the interview from Cat Candler, go visit us on Facebook. www.facebook.com slash capital cineform. And if you have a short film that you'd like to have showcased here on CCF, please send us an email with a link to that film at Capital Cineforum at texasstudenttv.com. Thanks for watching. No, bad kiss! Oh, bad kiss!